Hello, so this is going to be a video about really bad gas masks, and obviously this is not an attack on the countries that have made them, because I think pretty much every country that's designed gas masks has designed some that have been total flops. But this is going to be in my collection, because a lot of people have requested this, what are some of the worst gas masks I can find? Um, and with masks that you could argue that other masks in the same series would be just as bad, I'm just going to show one of them, because there's no point saying, oh, and this variation is also bad. So, um, obviously, as I said, no hate intended towards the countries that made these, um, but we're just going to look at masks that are objectively bad. So, first one may surprise you, because I don't really have any issues with it myself, but I know it has lots of issues. And this is um, the Yugoslavian M1, and I assume the MC1 would have the same problem. So, Yugoslavian M1 is pretty much a straight American M9A1 clone. However, there are some problems with it. One of the big problems, uh, well the only problem I've actually experienced personally is that this thread is really bad on here to get filters in and out of it. So, um, you know, that could compromise the seal, but again, you could now and again with quality control reasons, any mask could have a bad screw thread. So, what's the major gripe of this mask? Well, the problem with this mask is, and thankfully mine hasn't done this, is that they have a tendency to melt. Yep, melt. Uh, turn into goop. Um, now, I have no idea if it's due to exposure to sunlight or certain chemicals, but lots of people who have these masks in their private collections randomly find them one day and they've kind of dissolved into a rubber goo with the metal bits, like the eyepieces just kind of laying on top. So, um, why does that happen? I have no idea, but I'd assume the rubber in here was, because obviously this was a mask designed, um, because it's called the M59, the M1 or the M59 is one of the two names for it. I assume it was 1959, they bought the production rights or whatever, or just stole the M9 design to make M9 clones, and then, um, you know, they weren't expected to last all that long. This particular one is, does it have a date on it? That might be 1983, but I'm not sure if that's all the date. But the point being that they probably didn't intend these to be being used lots and lots of time later, although some people from... Uh, the former Yugoslavia, sort of the Balkan state, sort of like Bosnia and Serbia and Croatia, have told me that sometimes you still see riot police of these masks on where they're just using them against tear gas. Um, so they are still being used, but the issue is that obviously certain things can cause the mask to melt. Now I'd hate to think what that would happen if you had the mask on your face when it started melting, but I assume it's actually quite a slow process, where just over time if it's been exposed to something it slowly, slowly sort of eats away at itself. So i just put it on for you so you can see it. Um, I've done a video on this. This mask did actually work when I put a newer 60mm filter on it. So this just has that weird back kind of proper strap. There we go. So I'm not going to fully tighten that now, but as you can see, it's pretty much an American M9A1 clone. So I can't really fault the mask on that. Because as you probably know, I really like the M9 series, and the Finnish M61 is a really good mask. Um, but this thing, for whatever reason, has a tendency to want to melt itself. You can already see of this that it's kind of gone a bit weird and floppy with its own sort of shape over time compared to a lot of masks. So there we go. The Yugoslavian M59 or M1 um, has a tendency to mount and doesn't have very good screw threads, but again, I've not seen enough of the screw threads to know if my individual one is bad or if that was a general quality control issue on all of them. But, it, as it stands, these masks did have serious problems with melting for some reason in private collections. Now, you'll probably remember this mask from the other day. It's the Chinese Puda gas mask, and this is kind of a copy of a Draeger Explore, one of those models. Um, but you'll notice what I've done loose in the bottom of the bag is put the bracket in there, because what I ended up doing was threading the um, rubber strap through there, uh, which is a bit difficult, but this way it actually works as a mask. So, what are my gripes with this mask? There are two gripes. Um, the first one is, uh, there was a massive design flaw, where this top buckle wasn't designed the same way as the other buckle, as you can probably see. So, out of four out of five buckles, they put a really good sort of system on them that's fine. On the top one, they decided not to bother and just use a different design. If you look at the actual Draeger Explores these are copied from, the Draegers have um, the same strap system on every strap. For some reason, these don't. And it wasn't that I had a defective one, because I looked at more pictures of shops selling these, and they all have the same problem. So, 
I threaded that through there now, but what would happen is you'd be randomly wearing a mask and the buckle would fly off, and the mask would obviously move away from your face. The seal would be compromised because they put a stupid strap system on it that obviously did went through no quality assurance whatsoever. Because I'm sure, you know, the first person who was wearing one of these masks when they were doing the testing of them would have kept having that fly off because of how poor the design is. Um, but, you know, make loads of them and ship them anyway. Um, my second gripe is that because it's a silicon mask, um, sometimes when you pull the straps tighter because of where they're positioned, that actually causes the mask to fold in more on itself and like make a less efficient seal. Um, so I'm just going to put the mask on. As I said, I've already got the top strap sort of adjusted where I want it now. So get that on and get this strap system back. Oh, this strap's just come off. That's not good. Um, that hadn't happened before, but okay. <laughs> more reasons to hate this mask. Um, so I can probably show you what the problem is. This needs to obviously go back over here. Which is really difficult to do on camera. Okay, there we go. That's back in there. But as you can see, the problem with these buckles, and these buckles are better than most of them, is that um, they are not designed in a good way that when you're pulling the straps through, the buckle won't just fling itself off. And as I said, that buckle is evidently better than the top one, but you can see the problem. Um, when you put um, buckles in, you know, like, strap sections on a mask, you need a section where the strap's actually going to stay on the mask and not fly off when you're increasing tension on the strap. So, let's get this back on and try again. The other thing is keeping the top strap centralised, because if that goes to one side, the mask becomes very uncomfortable. So as you can see, that's on tight. It's not too uncomfortable. The other problem with it being silicon is, once you have a filter weighing it down, the mask pulls away from your face even more. So, um, yeah, not a brilliant mask design in theory. It's got a really good panoramic lens with a really good field of view. Of course, you need to tie that back, because otherwise that's going to block your field of view would be no different than wearing a regular mask but um, yeah in terms of how the mask is laid out which is obviously the Draeger design um, I have no faults with this the issue is that it's made out of silicon that's too soft and I'm assuming the Draeger version is probably a bit more butyl like so it's um, sticks to its shape a bit better and obviously my other main issue is um, that the strap system is just awful Rather than directly copying the Draeger strap system, they obviously went for a cheaper design to copy, and that design they copied made the mask massively inferior. Because, you know, a mask is going to do no good to protect you if you're wearing it for whatever reason, and all of a sudden the straps fly off because the buckle system is crap. So there you go, the Chinese pewter gas mask, um, not very good at all, despite how cool it looks. Okay, now for a series of masks you really know I hate, the GP7 and PMK series. So this is when, near the end of the Cold War, the Soviets decided they actually wanted to make kind of more advanced masks than they've been making before. Now, the early Soviet masks are really good. The reason being that early Soviet masks are very simple, but built to a very good, robust standard. Um, so, you know, it's a bit like all of the good Soviet engineering. It's very simple, but it's made to be very strong. Um, so an idiot can use it, and it's very hard to break. However, when they decided to make more complicated masks, they added too many features and there's massive design problems with it. So, this is the GP7, uh, not the GP7V, the V is the one with the drinking tube on, and the PMK has the drinking tube on. So, the drinking tube in itself isn't very good, but let's not go over that. So, the big problem with this mask is they have these really hard to adjust annoying straps. Now, I probably do need one that's a size bigger than this one, but... As you can see, it's got this weird sort of rubbery hood on the inside, which is meant to be where your face rests against. Uh, the problem is that, by default, um, it normally cuts into your face when you're trying to wear it. Uh, the voice diaphragm is fine and everything, but this is just nowhere near as good as the earlier Soviet mask. Oh, and the straps are really uncomfortable on this thing. They basically just eat into your head. Right. So as I said, I could do it with having one that's a slightly bigger size, but that's not really an issue because my PMK is bigger and the same faults are still there. So as you can see, that's cutting off my peripheral vision because the silly hood. Um, and I don't think there's any way that I can actually get my head into that more. 
And as far as I'm aware, you're definitely meant to use this bit as like a face rest because, you know, it makes sense where the chin is and everything else and the forehead. It's just the eye bits are just too big. Now, obviously, I am aware that you could probably... Let's get the mask off. That's fully loosened on the straps as well. Uh, I am aware that you could obviously get some scissors, and I don't want to do this because I collect masks, and cut these bits um, down a bit. So uh, they'd be in the way less. I mean, that's obviously a valid thing to do if you're trying to use the mask. But it also, to me, kind of looks like they wanted a hybrid between their old helmet-style masks with the hoods on and the straps. I kind of wonder if you fully take the straps off of this mask and just stretch this over your head, if that would um, work better. Now, I'm probably going to trap myself in the mask by doing this, but... It's probably going to be way too small. Yeah, it's going to be way too small. As I say, I wondered if you could kind of stretch this around your head, um, you know, like a retro Russian mask. Because if you did that, that would actually kind of be a bit more practical. But obviously, as I said, the flaws of these masks is before you even go into the drinking tube, they replace very robust and simple masks with ones with big design flaws and aren't very comfortable. And the issue of these is that it's they're very soft and flexible look. Um, which is fine on the Soviet sort of GP5 style masks, but when you go into things like this where they're meant to kind of keep a firm shape, that's also a bit of a design flaw, as you can probably understand why. Okay, and the last mask on the list, and I know you're going to say, why didn't you include the GSR, but I've just already ranted about the GSR enough, so as bad a mask as that is, it's, um, you know... I've gone over it enough times, I think. So this is the Hungarian M76, or 76M. I, th I think that's what it's called about looking it up. And there was two variants of this. There was an earlier one which might have been something like the M69 or something. Um, which had metal here, not plastic. This one's the plastic one, the later one. Now, this was Hungary's, uh, communist Hungary's mass-produced civilian gas mask for the Cold War. And it's very similar to the GM30 mask that Germany had during World War II as a sort of um, cheap military mask. It's basically rubber that's been coated in canvas. So the idea is that you can use less materials. Um, that. Now it actually looks quite nice, I really like the look of this mask. The issue is, uh, this is the bit that holds your chin in place. Now I've had some people say that, you know, maybe I've got the wrong size, and I think with all masks you could maybe argue that if I don't like them. But the issue of this mask is, it's just uh, not very good at making a face seal, because you see, when you've got rubber, especially if it's got a peripheral seal on it, uh, which and this almost as has a peripheral seal, it's just not made of rubber, which is part of the problem. Um, you can actually get quite a good face seal just simply due to... Um, you know, like how the rubber sort of sticks to your skin in a sense. When you don't have that, it means if your face doesn't exactly fit the um, shape of it, uh, you've got a bit of a problem. So, what I'm going to do is put this mask on. Another thing I don't like about this, which I'll point out, is the straps. Uh, these are fully loosened at the moment as well. And as far as I'm aware, when I looked at the size for it, this isn't yet. Yeah, that's a size 4, if you can see up there. That's definitely a size 4 because I was looking up the sizes, so this isn't a size 1, that is a size 4 because you can see the bit where it goes across. Um, from what I understand, size 4 is one of the biggest sizes of these as well, so where this one is too small there's a bit of a problem there. Alright, so let's see if I can stretch this over just about. Okay, so this is basically how the straps are meant to work. Now, one of the things I don't like is these straps do not go around my ears properly. They just kind of do that. So whoever designed this didn't really think where are the straps going to go. Now, then there's a reverse strap that you can put on. Which is hard to do. Ah, uh, it's pinched my skin. Fuck. Alright, there we go. So... When I did tests on this, I could never get it to pressurise properly. Now, this is a bit claustrophobic, so I'm going to get it off. But the issue of this, it's very hard to tighten it properly to get an airtight seal, at least for me. Uh, the materials mean it's not very flexible or useful. Um, and as I said, the straps are really weird, because they just don't go where you'd expect the straps to go, which is kind of a problem. Um, you know, what you'd expect if you were wearing it, is that, again, it's because also there's like a weird adjustable bit on the strap system, which doesn't make much sense here. Uh, yeah, that's very odd, isn't it? So, the sort of point is, what you'd expect is you'd have it on, obviously the top strap goes over your sort of dome, 
and then your ears go between these two straps. That's what you'd expect, but it's not really laid out like that. Um, so yeah. The thing is, Hungary was making like PMG masks and things like that during the Cold War, so for the civilians, why didn't they bother just making GP5s? That's what seems very weird to me. Because I'm sure GP5 being mass produced would actually be cheaper than these, because obviously coating the canvas on and the bits of elastic in here and everything else probably actually brings the cost up to be more than the GP5. So, as I said, I'm not going to bring the GSR into this video, even it probably deserves to be in it, just because I've covered the GSR enough times before, but all these masks are basically ones where They've got a bit of a design flaw, to be honest, with how they've been made, um, or serious design flaws, how they've been made, whether it be melting if exposed to certain chemicals, which isn't very good in a military gas mask, is it? Um, ones that don't make face seals where the straps don't quite go where they're meant to be, um, like the GP7 PMK series where they've got the inner rubber hood that just gets in the way, or, um, you know, like the Chinese one where the straps ping off when you try and adjust them. So, there we go. Um, that's this video, and as I said, no hate intended towards the countries that made these masks. I think every country's made bad masks at different times, but out of my collection, these are the masks where I look at them and think, who came up with this idea?